So uh, we are going to dive in um, and get things rolling here. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Alex. This is Craig. We are here on Monday afternoons, uh, three weeks out of a month. We are doing workshops right here in the Agent Inner Circle group that are totally free on all sorts of topics all year long. So if you're interested in other ones, check out the events that are coming up in the group, as well as uh, let us know for topics in chat as we go. If there are things, topics, uh, things you'd like us to cover, anything like that, throw it in chat. Um, we would love to hear it, and we'll see if we can fit it into the schedule this year. So uh, appreciate that. Um, I am going to take us over the slides and um, join us on in. As you probably saw in joining it, we are talking about creating a Facebook uh, posting calendar today. Um, and just all the difficulties that go into staying up to date um, with Facebook, staying consistent on Facebook, and then how to build content and create a posting calendar that will get engagement. Uh, before we get to that, though, uh, I do want to mention that these workshops all year long are presented by both Craig uh, and my groups. So for Craig's side, um, this is getting brought to you by the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, Craig, do you want to give them a, a second here and just let them know what that is? Sure, absolutely. So RETI, uh, which the website is reti.us, um, we have a whole team of um, technology and marketing speakers and experts. And of course, Alex is a part of that team as well. He's a key part of it. Um, so what we do is we put on, first of all, free webinars every single Wednesday at four o'clock Eastern. We do a different webinar every single week. Uh, we also partner with uh, you know Service for Life and Agent and Circle on these Monday workshops. And then we've been going for a couple of years now. So we have over 2,500 instructional videos, product reviews, and webinars. So we always say that it's the place for a realtor to go if they want to learn about technology or marketing or cybersecurity, really anything techie that affects their business. Um, you go check out RETI, and hopefully you get an account there, and that way you have access to our entire huge library of, again, instructional videos, webinars, and everything else to help you in your business. Awesome. I love it. All right. So from my side, um, this is being brought to you, obviously, by through the Agent Inner Circle group, but uh, more specifically through Service for Life. If you are interested in uh, following up with clients, getting the majority of your business from uh, repeat, referral, uh, you know, your sphere of influence, definitely check out Service for Life. Uh, it is a, a great tool, and I've seen so many agents get to 100% referral business on it, um, you know, you should definitely check it out too. So that being said, uh, this uh, today, this workshop is brought to you by both of those groups. And the workshop we are covering is creating a Facebook posting calendar. And as you probably know, Craig and I do a good bit of posting ourselves, um, getting the word out and, and growing a community. And today we're going to cover some of the secrets that we use and some of the you know tips and tricks that we use to make sure that we stay consistent and put out content every week um, and that it's stuff that is really really engaging to the audience so we'll dive in here and we're going to cover this in three steps and step one is that you really want to come up with what we call your social object or your bonding device and and craig i don't know if you want to explain a little bit more about this to sure. everybody. yeah absolutely so basically when anytime I teach social media, I always say this is really your step one of going home, doing social media uh, and doing it in a good, efficient way is you really want to think about what about you is it you want to really focus on out there in social media. In other words, you want people out in your community to kind of recognize you for something like, oh, you're the guy that always is posting about golfing. You're always talking about animals or you're always talking about waterfront property and you're always out on your boat. Like you want to have people to identify with something that you really specialize or passionate about. Uh, and what you're really doing is you're also building up what's called a bonding device, which means if someone else has the same common interests as you, well, bam, they might be a perfect person who might end up being a friend or hopefully an eventual client. Uh, because the way all these social media sites algorithms are kind of kind of configured is they're trying to team you up with content that you're interested in and other people that have similar interests as you. So by you kind of defining what your social object or bonding device is, that is going to help you just kind of have a focus of what kind of content you'll talk about every day on social media. I don't want to say every day. It gives at least a majority of what you're posting about. And it also helps you, again, 
link up with people of a similar interest or passion as you. Absolutely. And it's, it's more than uh, just, we'll say, coming up with your brand. You know, it's really coming up with what sort of interaction points are you passionate about that someone else is, is really passionate about and will interact with you um, in doing that. And there are some sort of tips and tricks to figuring out what those things are. Um, and it was interesting because Craig and I, even earlier today, had a really great discussion about how finding these things is a little bit different for real estate than it is for some other industries. Um, and and I don't know, Craig, do you want to maybe dive into that? Because I'll, I don't know, it was, it was just an interesting combo, and I thought yeah. we should share it. Yeah, it, it was slight discussion, slight argument, but it's all good. Um, like what we were really talking about is, first of all, your social object, the thing that you're really going to pick does not have to be about real estate. In fact, it probably doesn't need to be about real estate. You want people to just not think of you as a suit and tie, just, you know, business 100% of the time. And you want people to realize that you're a person, like that you have a, a, an interest outside of the real estate world that you do all the time, whether it be gardening, whatever it is. Yep. I mean, you want people to know you're a human being because I say this all the time. People connect with people. They don't connect with logos. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly what we talked about. And I, I sort of gave Craig the example and, and talked a little bit about it. And I said, you know, it's something we actually see in Service for Life consistently, which is that people are not generally interested in real estate outside of when they are looking to buy or sell a home. There's about a 12 month, maybe 18 month at the long end period where people will be interested in real estate information um, out of every, gosh, eight or so years. Um, if you look at, you know, how much time there is between transactions, things like that, not just how long people live in their homes, that's a little bit longer, but the time in between transactions shows us that people are really uh, not as interested in real estate information in between that. So, um, including some information about real estate and about your expertise and all that is fantastic, but it's not necessarily something that's going to keep your audience, you know, tuned in for five, six, seven, eight years, um, until the next time that they are interested in that topic. So for real estate, it's, it's really, really important because it's not an interest that continues on. It's really, really important to stay in front of people with some of those other interests. And I always sort of think about it in this sense. It, it, it was interesting. From our discussion earlier, Craig, I was kind of thinking about it. And I said, if you're thinking about trying to become an expert in selling a beachfront property, focus on the beachfront, not the property. Yep. Right? The so lifestyle. The, the lifestyle. lifestyle. Focus on all of the things that go with the beach. Fishing, swimming, right? There, there's all sorts of yeah. other beach volleyball. There's all sorts of other things that go along with that lifestyle at the beach. Boating, sailing, whatever it might be that are going to give you a greater connection point to somebody um, than, you know, other you might otherwise have and, and stand out to people uh, to be able to work with them and, and actually get in front of them. Now, it's really interesting here because I'll... I'll put you back on Craig but um we talked about this too it's really something you got to be passionate about and it's something that you can't just highlight boating or sailing if at some level you're not necessarily uh passionate about that or interested about that yourself right. um I know you have yep. some great advice for this Craig yeah, well, I mean, a big reason is if you're not passionate about it, one, like Alex said, it's going to come through, right? That it's not, you're just kind of forcing it. Uh, but the other side of it is you, whether it's something you're not wholly, totally passionate about or you don't want to niche yourself so small, we're going to run out of posting on content ideas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it'd be better to talk about the whole beach, uh, you know, like waterfront lifestyle than it would just talking about, hey, I live on the beach right. uh, or you know, really getting into the entire outdoor lifestyle than talking about just one specific thing you do. Because again, you want to make sure that you can have ideas you can post about every day for years. You don't want to, again, niche yourself so small uh, or something you're not passionate about where you're going to run out of ideas quickly. Right. And the key um, here, so, like you always okay. say, is, is you want to focus on something, right? So pick 
yeah. what that is. Yeah, and by the way, once you pick your social object, this niche, it does not mean 100% of your posts from this day forward have to be about that. Maybe about half, you know, somewhere in that 50, 60% range. You know, you just want to make sure you're sprinkling some of your passion. That way people know, again, you're not just a realtor. You do a lot of other things. Um, so when you're trying to figure out what your whole niche is, I mean, maybe it's that you have a really deep knowledge expertise in some area, whether it is real estate or outside of real estate, right? Uh, is it there's a hobby or activity you're really passionate about? Um, is it a lifestyle that you live and that also you're trying to project? Um, and so for some people, it's I have an existing marketing strategy and I want my online presence to really represent and strengthen my marketing brand, right? So if you already have that kind of whole marketing image out there, why not make your social media niche the same thing? Again, you're probably already passionate about it if your entire marketing brand is built around that already. So again, it's all about finding something about you. It's doing a little bit and interception. I'm sorry, introspection. Can't even say that word today. Uh, and thinking, what about me do I want the people in the community to know me for? And then I'm going to post about it on a consistent basis. I feel like this is, um, Craig, I feel like this is where you and I always come up with like uh, the, I don't know how to say it here. People are like, well, how much content can I really come up with? you know, about whatever topic over a long period of time, over years or over whatever it is. Because, you know, for the first couple of weeks, it becomes, it's not too bad. It's pretty easy to say, okay, we're going to do the yep. same whatever, and it's the same lifestyle. We're talking about the beach or we're talking about whatever it is um, to stay with that. But I know I have some tricks and you have some tricks and so on for um, how we then use whatever expertise, whatever lifestyle or thing that we've picked that we really want to use as our social object um, to turn that into weekly content. And I know for me, yep. that has to do with creating uh, a theme and really mm -hmm. it's multiple themes. So um, these are different topics or ideas that you can post about each week. And I'm sure you kind of even see it within our agent inner circle group. So Mondays, I write a welcome post. Uh, Tuesdays is usually some sort of poll, right? Wednesdays, we put our content out. Fridays, I have a Friday funny that I usually try to post up. So there's some sort of theme that we're keeping on a consistent week-to-week um, -week basis where it makes it a lot easier to sit down and every week say, okay, what do I need for next week? What sort of content am I after? Um, and and really be consistent about it and stay consistent with those themes. Um, now, we should kind of want to tell them about, well, I mean, we've, we've announced the masterclass so far, uh, but I don't think a lot of folks know some of the extras that we're giving away, Craig. Um, yep. So what I show as an image here on the right-hand side is a... Uh, a theme calendar, essentially a brainstorming worksheet for themes that you can use to create your weekly theme and weekly posting calendar. Um, that is something we're going to be giving away as part of the masterclass uh, at the end of the month on the 29th. So um, if folks are interested in that, let us know in chat. Uh, we're going to be giving away a bunch of other stuff as well. And we'll get to more of that at the end. But I figured since this came up, I might as well bring it up. Um, but either way, you want to make sure that you spend some time brainstorming about the themes that you want to come up with and you want to use consistently on a weekly basis because it makes so much, I mean, it makes it so much easier. You're not pulling. It really does. I mean, for some people, they don't like planning social media, but if you really want to be able to do this right and not struggle on a daily basis, planning really pays off. It really yep. does. Yep. Planning absolutely does. Now, Posting ahead of time or using posting stuff might not be the best option, even that's while a whole different story. that's a whole different story. And we're actually going to get to that uh, toward the end. Um, but like I said, it's not necessarily scheduling it ahead of time. Uh, it's more so just making sure you have the content ready ahead of time. We'll yeah. get into which, which. And by the way, if I could point out one important thing that Alex said in there, he said, you know, like if I have my themes for each day of the week, I can kind of plan it out the week before. Right. Like we're not talking about planning a year in advance. That's that stuff always backfires. But if you have these themes set up, you could sit down one day a week 
and kind of plan out your next several days what you're going to do. So yep. again, we're not talking about months in advance. That doesn't really work. And so to, and posting services don't work really well. But planning a few days out can. Absolutely. Now we'll give you a couple ideas um, of this here. And these are just a few that you know we have seen people use uh, use consistently work well for them. You know, Monday could be a market update Monday. Or Tuesday, you have a picture of the community. Um, or maybe Wednesday, you're asking your audience a question. Questions are really great engagement tools. And that's something we're going to cover mm -hmm. in the workshop for free next week um, about why some posts get engagement and why some don't, why Facebook shows some stuff and doesn't show others. Uh, that's going to be a, a really, really fun one. So if you're not already set up for that uh, free workshop next week, definitely check that out. Now, once you've come up with those and you've picked um, your themes, you've picked some of your topics that you're going to be using around your social object. The last piece to this is to utilize some content tools. And these are various um, posting tools, places to find content, uh, places to fill in content for things that you're already doing. Um, now, I know you've covered a bunch of great ones of these over the years, Craig. We both use a bunch of these. Um, but the first one is actually yours. Um, yes, it is. You give away <laughs> a free posting uh, calendar on RETI. Is that right? Yeah. So every month we put out, we do it usually, you know, uh, a week or so before the month starts, we put out a social media posting calendar for the following month. And if you know what a social media posting calendar is, you may not realize this, but there's at least one stupid holiday every single day of the year. Um, so <laughs> what we do is we kind of grab all those holidays, throw them into a calendar. And that way, if you wake up one morning and you're a little bit brain dead, don't know what you're going to post today on social media, you can look at the calendar and say, okay, today is the 14th. So today is all this right. holiday. They, they gave me a good idea for a poll question, Greg. Um, what yeah. is your favorite stupid holiday? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's some. Just oh, I know there are some ones, doozies man. out there that are are ridiculous. Oz Chat, do you guys have any uh, ridiculous or what like what Craig calls stupid holidays <laughs> oh, it, oh, <laughs> that are your they, favorites? They, when I put this together every month, it just I, I crack up sometimes looking at some of the holidays. <laughs> uh, but just kind of give an example. Today being the fifteenth um, is World Consumer Rights Day or Everything You Think Is Wrong Day, right? So, like, you could do, like, a kind of funny thing on social media of, oh, you always thought this was it. Nope, this is the real answer. Everything you thought was wrong. That's um, so that's the idea is you look at one of these calendars and come up with an idea. And if you don't like the holidays for that day, there's also, like, monthly themes like uh, March is Irish American Pride Month, uh, Music in Our Schools Month, and so on. So that's what a calendar really does. It helps you fill in the blanks when you don't have something to go talk about. Tommy says Valentine's Day. Uh, Vicky Kennedy <laughs> says Get Over It Day. <laughs> I love yep. it. Oh, this is great. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Some of them that are out that are just so random. It's hilarious. That's those it. are actually your... <laughs> I know, right? It's, I can understand those. Those are pretty fantastic. So, um, Craig, where can they get this? RETI.us if they want a free yes. uh, calendar oh. from you or for posting calendar? Yep. If awesome. you go to reti.us, uh, we always in in the little slideshow at the very on the first page. Um, it's always one of the main things in that slideshow is this month's posting calendar. Okay. Um, you know, well, you just click on that, and you could either print it out, download it, whatever you want to do, and we design it so that you could use it as a real calendar. Like it just has the little holidays in the bottom of each day's box, and that way you could fill out, use it for a real calendar if you want to. Perfect. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, and by the way, one of the extra perks we're going to do for the master class at the end of the month is we're going to provide a posting calendar for the entire year. Yeah. So, you know, usually you, you got to go month by month and find an RTI, but at the master class, we're going to give the entire years. So. Yeah, we got a we got a bunch of cool giveaway stuff. We got the theme brainstorming worksheet. Uh, we got the uh, posting calendar. We've got there's a bunch of stuff that we're uh, we're including with the master class as tools people can use. <laughs> um to, to really implement what uh what we're teaching so um stick around for that uh definitely check out that link that is the 29th um of this month and will be a lot of fun now beyond uh the reti posting calendar great place to find content um i know you and i both use flipboard 
Um, yes. Do you want to talk Love a little Flipboard. bit about that? Sure. Um, Flipboard, it, you can use it as a website, but it's so much better as a mobile app. Um, so Flipboard, in my opinion, probably is the best news aggregate, aggregating app there is. So in other words, it pulls in stories from all around the Internet. And as soon as you use it, you'll see there's normal news categories in there for news, business, entertainment, stuff like that. But the coolest part about Flipboard, even for free, is you can create your own personalized magazines. So all you literally have to do is click a plus button and say, I want to create a real estate magazine. You type in the word real estate and bam, it creates a real estate magazine for you. So in other words, it'll pull in every new story on the internet about real estate. Uh, if you want to create one, Tommy, if you want to create one for San Diego, you just type in San Diego and bam, you have a San Diego magazine. And what it really means is anytime you want, you could just kind of click into your real estate magazine and flip through every new story on the internet about real estate if you find a story that you're interested in, you click into it and can read it and then even share it right out the social media right from there with your own inputs. You know, great article today in, you know, Inman about blank and give everyone your summary about that article in Inman. So it's amazing for just staying on top of a topic like real estate or your town. And it's also incredible to help you literally come up with ideas and content to post about social media anytime you go into it. Absolutely. The only thing I find with Flipboard, and, and I know they have, notifications and so on but i always feel like they're curating so much content for you that it's tough mm -hmm. to uh like i don't check the notifications as much you almost have to sort of keep in mind to actively go check flipboard or go into flipboard for stuff and i use it really as a tool where like you said if you wake up and you're just brain dead that day and you need to find content or you need to find you know that sort of stuff um flipboard is a really really good resource for that you definitely Agreed. can. Yeah, and by the way, I don't, I don't use it for notifications either, yeah. but I mean, people ask me all the time, how do I stay so on top of technology? It's Flipboard because I have uh, magazines in Flipboard for just overall technology for Google, for Apple, and nothing slips by me because I, that's where I get my news from every morning. Yep. Absolutely. The other one, and, and if you're not going to that, the one that more sort of actively pokes you, and again, is something that I know both of us use, um, is Google Alerts. And I'll, uh, I'll take this to me for a sec. Um, Google Alerts sure. is a uh, really, really great program that Google runs. It is totally free. Um, where And if you, you folks on the, on the live might have heard of Google Alerts before, but if not... I'll give a quick overview and then give you some sort of extra tips that you can use. So first, uh, if you haven't checked it out before, what Google Alerts does is it actively crawls the internet every day, just like Google does, and responds when a new article matching a keyword or some search term that you've entered comes onto the internet for the first time. So if you, uh, say, have your name or your business's name or things like that, any time that they show up um, online, it's a great tool to be able to, uh, you know, figure out if people are talking about you or things of that nature. The other way it can be used, though, and how Craig and I use it a lot, is staying up to date on certain media. So just like you can snoop out who's talking about you, you can put in all your competitors and know all of the content of the articles that are coming out and the stuff that's getting put online about them. You can do it about specific topics, um, whether it's technology topics or real estate topics or things like that. The trick with Google Alerts, though, is that, and where a lot of people uh, have challenges with it, is that Google Alerts uses the same... Um, if you... Let me back up. Challenge folks have is that when they enter just basic open search terms, a lot of times Google will give them articles back that may not uh, fit. Meaning, if you put in the word real estate, there's a whole bunch of news articles out there that have the words real estate that don't necessarily have to do with residential real estate or updates in the real estate market or things that you might be after for content. The real trick is figuring out how to build the correct searches so that uh, Google Alerts uh, returns the information that you want much more specifically. We have some content on Agent Inner Circle. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth today on that. Um, but there is an article over on Agent Inner Circle. Uh, it's how this Google trick saves me 60 hours a year. It goes over how to build 
all of these search terms for uh, your inbox, for your email, but those same tricks work inside of uh, Google Alerts. So it's all about building really, really good searches um, and making sure that you get that, but it is a great tool to make sure that you get updated on content whenever that, uh, that content comes out. Now, the next one, Craig, I know this is one you use uh, a little bit more than mm -hmm. I do, which is Pinterest. Um, another yep. great place to find content. It's an incredible place. In fact, 82% of the uh, activity on Pinterest is sharing other people's content. Um, so it's a great place to find your discover things. So if you don't know how Pinterest works, it's an all visual site, but it's all organized into what are called pin or vision boards. So for example, if you create a board for kitchens, you'd see a nonstop feed of pictures of kitchens. If you do one for, um, let's say pools, you'll see a nonstop feed of pools. So Pinterest is great for finding just really cool imagery. And this is a good example. Like I have a board on Pinterest just for infographics. Now, if you don't know what an infographic is, they're very kind of cool looking. They almost look like posters that have a lot of stats and information in them. People engage with infographics at a very high level on online. People love them. They read them. They share them like crazy because they're just packed with information. Uh, now, they're very popular, but I don't have the time to create my own infographics. They're very time consuming to create. So I just have a board on pitch that pulls them all in for me. So every once in a while, I go check out that board and I'll be like, "Ooh, that's a really good business uh, infographic. That would be a great post today for LinkedIn. Oh, this one's really good about millennial trends. I'm going to go use this as a post on Instagram. I love it. I mean, yeah, Pinterest is great for that. Uh, I probably should use it a little bit more than I do these days. But uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Another great place to source content. Um, one that I use a ton, though, is uh, Giphy. Um, this is one yep. we actually talked about. Was it last week's webinar or last week's workshop? Um, or the last, last week, workshop yep. that we how did. We memes. talked about how to create memes uh, as well as uh, talked a little bit about um, Giphy and GIFs and how they work and how to use them and all that fun sort of stuff. So uh, definitely a great place to create them, find them, um, and so on if you're looking for content to put out. Giphy to me is more a place to not necessarily look for content from scratch, but more a place to spice up your content a little bit. If you're thinking about posting a specific question or posting a specific, um, you know, comment or ask or any any of that stuff, um, we have a good question here. I'll get to that in one second. So uh, Giphy is great for um, that, essentially. Now, Elieth says, why don't you get in trouble for copying someone else's Pinterest graphic? So it's, a, it's an interesting, it's a very, very good question. And you obviously always want to pay attention to uh, the usage rights on what is out there. Um, a lot of times with these infographics on Pinterest will actually have the logo, promotional stuff, etc., from the company that's putting out that infographic. And their goal in putting out that infographic is to get it shared. Like 80 Correct. or 85% of the content that's on Pinterest is repins. Um, yep. So the, their goal is very much to get it shared. Now, you don't want to take one of the infographics and crop somebody else's logo out of it. Right. You don't That's want to steal yep. an infographic that is copyrighted. But a lot of times on Pinterest, these companies put together these infographics so that they get shared, so that they get more coverage um, and, and more info out there. And you're doing them a favor by doing that. So obviously be mindful about copyrights always uh, in your business. But um, in this case, a lot of times this content is being put out specifically to be shared. Um, so just, I guess, keep that in mind, but great question. Great. Always a good concern yep, to have absolutely. for sure. For sure. Um, now beyond Giphy and, and some ways to spice up what you're doing, we covered, uh, image flip, uh, IMG FLIP.com, which is a place that we talked about creating memes. Um, and, uh, we had a lot of fun at the last workshop creating memes. If you're interested in more stuff about that, that is a great place to go. Uh, and figure out another way to create more content. Uh, another one that we covered last month is Canva. And Craig, I'll let you dive into this um, 
into Canva a little bit because there's so much in there in terms of creating content. Yeah, I mean, it, there's no way to cover Canva in this short little time we're doing and do it justice, but we did a, our master class in January on it and it was so popular we might even be end up doing another one sometime soon. Uh, but Canva is the easiest graphic design tool you'll ever see. And there's over uh, like hundreds of things you could design from your social media post to your cover photos to animations and videos flyers, brochures, I mean, any one design, you could design it in Canva pretty easily for free. Um, and the beautiful part about Canva, if you go to the next slide, is that no matter what you choose to design, like the uh, screenshot there on the left is a Facebook post, and then the one down on the right is a cover photo, the, anything you choose to design will be the exact right size of what you need to design. And there's a gigantic library of beautiful looking designs that are already created by professional artists that work for Canva. So as long as you pick one of their professional templates, you just make the little changes you want. And it's very hard to ugly up or screw up a design in Canva. So again, once you learn how to do, learn, do a post, you could then do your cover photo, videos. I mean, the design tool is very simple and easy to use no matter what you're designing in Canva. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a great program. Um, you know, I've never seen anybody that's used it that doesn't love it because it is so easy to use. And almost in all cases, it's free to use. The only times you ever pay for anything in Canva is if you buy one of their premium pictures or premium layouts. And if you do that, you're talking about a dollar. Okay. Um, and then there is what's called Canva Pro, which has a lot of premium tools in it, uh, which is 12 bucks a month. And you don't have to worry about paying for anything in Canva, like all the pictures and everything are included. But Canva is a great program. You can even order printing out of it. You can download the files to your own device. It's just a great, great tool. And you could either use it on a computer at canva.com or they have a great mobile device uh, app as well for your mobile devices. Yep, absolutely. You know, Craig, um, all of these are great tools and great places to be able to find and create content. Um, but I think I want to give everybody a caveat here uh, a little bit. And I know you put this as... Um, sharing is caring. Um, but I think people oftentimes, uh, focus too much on creating as opposed to curating. And yep. I think when people focus on creating and trying to create all new content, um, for folks, it can go back, it can sort of backfire because you have a ton of content to create and it's hard as an individual to keep up with the kind of content posting calendar if you're trying to create all of it from scratch. So that being said, don't be afraid to share content. In fact, a lot of people, um, you know, they'll appreciate that you are sharing it and it doesn't do anything less in terms of uh, inf informing people about who you are, or your character. Um, if anything, it makes it more relatable that you're sharing content from other people that they might have even seen in other places. Uh, it's kind of interesting that all the studies that talk about, you know, how many times something gets put in front of somebody on social media before they actually interact with it. It's not necessarily the first time they click on that article. Um, so even if you're seeing it shared by others, don't feel like you can't be sharing that same content yourself. Um, some of your audiences might overlap, but certainly a lot of them don't. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you like it, your sphere will probably like it. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're curating content, as opposed to maybe taking all this time to create new con content in Canva. Now we got to talk about something here and I'm actually just going to take us back to interview screen here. Um, because Let's talk about posting services here for a second, because the last thing that a lot of people try to use to save time um, in social media and you know save time every week is some sort of posting service like Hootsuite or Buffer or and and I'll take us you know Craig I'll take you to the slides here, um, but I would not rely on these services. So we'll mention Hootsuite and we'll mention Buffer. Um, and, and I wouldn't even count them as post, at least what most realtors consider as posting services. Um, when we're talking about posting services, there's so many either individual people or companies you can hire now that'll create content and post for you on a daily basis. Okay. So we'll talk about Hootsuite and Buffer in a second. Those are more like systems that help you manage and run your social media. But 
there's so many uh, companies now that service the real estate industry saying, oh, we'll post you every day. We'll post your listings. We'll post real estate news into your feed, stuff like that. Um, and our, at least our take on it is I would never advise someone to make that their primary posting. If, if all you're doing is you're signing up with a posting service to supplement what you're already doing, so that way there's multiple posts a day, not just the occasional ones you're doing, um, then that's one thing. Okay. But typically posting services, a lot of times are very generic. Um, they're rarely localized. And I'll just give you an example. I'm based out of Florida and I can't tell you how many realtors I see in the state of Florida having posts in their social media about shoveling snow or about basements, right? We can't have basements in Florida. You dig two feet, you hit water, no matter where you are in the state, but they'll have stuff in their social media feeds about how to spruce up your basement. You know what I mean? And I know right away, great, you're paying someone to do your social media because that makes you look foolish, you know, like when it's totally wrong. So if all you're using a posting service, like someone doing your social media for you, is to supplement what you're doing already, that's slightly acceptable. But if it's your main thing, it it never works. Uh, typically, posting services get very little engagement because they're posting the same generic crap in everyone's feed. And at the same time, they're also penalized in the algorithms and get very little exposure. Yep. Because sites like Facebook and Twitter, they know when everyone's posting the same stuff. They know it. Absolutely. Well, and the other part, Craig, that I think um, I at least want to mention here in terms of having people do that is the rule that I always tell people uh, to abide by and to live by when it comes to other people creating content for them is that at the absolute minimum, you need to approve. You need to see and approve every piece of content that goes out. It, yep. it you can't, um, I think the biggest mistake I see is that it's not just that, the, the problem isn't that just uh, we have somebody else creating content for us and it might be off. It's that agents a lot of times try to put that on autopilot and it's something that just can't be put on autopilot. Um, as Craig mentioned, there's too many times that content just doesn't fit up with where you are or you know one thing i've seen is agents who you know they started paying for it a couple of years ago and over time you know the first 6 months it might have fit who they are but then for the next 18 months those articles were not about the lifestyles and the what we talked about to begin with that social object the thing that you should be posting about consistently all the time um, to keep people coming back and making that interaction um, and that that bonding device that you have with people. So y you can't rely on it to the extent that you should never have it in place where that content is going out without you at least seeing it first. Um, beyond that, though, I always worry about outside posting services because a lot of them will use... If it's not Hootsuite or Buffer, they will use some internal behind the scenes automated system to be able to post all of those out. Meaning they're not logging into your Facebook account, going into the Facebook page, copy and pasting that and doing it for you. They're using some sort of uh, behind the scenes tool like a, we talked about it before, but Hootsuite or Buffer to do that. It might not be that exact product, but the same platform. Now, there are some reasons you might not want to do that. And I'll let, you know, Craig, I'll let you cover Hootsuite and Buffer first, and then we'll talk to everybody about why that might not be your best uh, option, per se. Yep. So um, Hootsuite and Buffer, what they basically are, they're called social media dashboards. Now, if, and by the way, when I teach social media, one thing I'm a heavy believer in is that you as a realtor, any kind of business, should not have a presence on every social media site. Uh, because if you put yourself on too many, you spread yourself too thin and you're not doing a bad job on all of them, right? I always coach, pick a site or two and just really dig your, your, all your, your resources and time into a site or two and crush Same. that site or two. Same. So if you go by that guidance of not being on multiple sites, just being on a couple, you don't even need to consider using a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer. Uh, but if you are going to try to take on multiple sites and you're you're you have pages on and personals on each of them, and you're a member of groups, and you're active in those groups. Well, if you're really really active in social media, looking into a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer becomes an option for you. 
because first of all, they're paid programs. Um, Hootsuite is now $30 a month and uh, Buffer, I believe, is $16 a month. And it only gets you limited number of things for 16. Uh, and if you go beyond that, it goes up to, I believe, all the way up to 64 a month. So you're not talking about inexpensive tools here. You're going to pay a good amount of money to use Hootsuite or to use Buffer. Uh, but what they allow you to do is really manage and run your whole social media life out of one location. So instead of having to go to Facebook and then separately go to Twitter and then separately go to LinkedIn and so on and so on, you just go to one place, Hootsuite, and manage every time. You can comment on other people's comments. You can know if anyone's trying to communicate with you. You can post to multiple sites at once. You can do a lot of things in a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer without having to go to all those sites individually. Uh, but what Alex was kind of hinting at is that from a posting standpoint, when, a, when you use a tool like this and you're posting from the outside, and especially if you're posting multiple places from the outside, the, uh, the social media sites penalize you. They know you're not going to the site, you're not doing the true experience, and then your posts get less exposure for free. So even though they're convenient to run your whole life out of one location, in my opinion, they're just not worth it because, again, if you're just doing a site or two, you don't need these tools. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, if you are going to try a bunch of sites, your posts are getting penalized if you're posting more than one site at the same time, which is one of their biggest features. Yep. So that's my personal take on it. A lot of times they are detrimental, not helpful by using these kinds of tools. Absolutely. Now, what they are great for is analytics. I was just like about to say that, Craig the data of what's going on. That's yep. what they're really known for now. Yep, exactly. I was just about to say that, Craig. They're really at this point, uh, both Hootsuite and Buffer, a lot, I think a lot more about the data, the analytics, how your trend, you know, how your statistics are trending over time, mm -hmm. um, things yep. like that in terms of your posts. I think that is a lot, um, a lot more of what they do these days. So if you really are interested in all the details and all the analytics and you're, you're really managing a large presence, something to look into. Um, but at, at the levels, I think a lot of folks are, it's not necessarily helpful and in some ways detrimental to, uh, to what everybody's doing. You know what's funny, Craig? How long ago did I predict that before we actually knew it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, have, you actually had a tool similar to these that you built and it was all about this. It was all about this. And then Facebook changed the way the outside posting from the API worked. And we were just like, well, that was fun. <laughs> that was yeah. right. Like they're one, you're, they're one that business you built. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's always fun. So in event, um, that is really the the major steps for uh, creating a posting calendar is coming up with your social object, uh, creating your themes um, and what you're going to be posting consistently, and then using the right tools to either create content, curate content, uh, or look at some of the analytics and get that content out there. Now, this is just a small piece of what Craig and I know about social media and what we cover in a number of other classes on social media. So um, we're going to post the link in chat here. If you are interested in it or if you are going to go to the masterclass, uh, let us know in chat. We still have the uh, early sign up discount in place for everybody. Um, it is still a, a $30 instead of $35 for the masterclass. Craig and I are going to be covering a ton of amazing stuff. Um, what types of posts that you want to be using to show up in more news feeds uh, and engage with more people. How to get content out every week um, without it distracting from what you're doing and working with clients. We covered a little bit of that today, but we're going to cover it in a lot more depth uh, and have some examples that you can work through and some worksheets that you can work through as well. We're going to give you some tips to getting more likes, more comments, uh, more shares, getting more people to really engage what you're do with what you're doing. And there are some just little tips and tricks of ways that you can change your posts up or uh, change just how you're posting the stuff that you're already posting, or even maybe when you're posting some of the stuff you're already posting and get a lot more reach uh, out of that. Now with that, we're going to be giving away, um, and I don't want to say giving it away because included with the price of the masterclass, we are going to be including a Facebook um, essential uh, toolkit where it is pretty much everything that you need. The first is your audience identifier worksheet. 
Um, that allows you to figure out what your social object is, what your audience is really interested in, and some of the best ways to connect with them. Uh, we're going to include the theme brainstorming worksheet, which is a, as I talked about earlier, uh, a worksheet you can use to brainstorm all of your different weekly themes and make sure that you have consistent content going out there. Um, and then last but not least, we have a posting calendar template uh, for the full year that we are going to be including with that as well. So uh link is in chat if you are interested let us know below uh, if you are going to that let us know in chat um there are a bunch of great tools that are going to go along with that uh before we close up i'll just mention this is brought to you as usual these free workshops by uh first the real estate technology institute um the uh, real estate technology institute is a great place uh, to learn everything about technology within real estate. So if you want to check that out, reti.us. Uh, Craig Grant is the founder over there. I am an instructor as well over there. There's an amazing amount of content to check out. So definitely do that. Beyond that, my group, Service for Life, um, if you are interested in following up um, with your sphere of influence, making sure that you stay in front of them on a monthly basis, that it's something they actually read, uh, definitely check out serviceforlife.com. So um, what's next? All right, Craig, do you want to take them through what's next? Because we got a, we got a sure. couple doozies coming up here. Sure. So uh, next week on the 22nd, same time, we're going to do in 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, our next free workshop, just like this one, on why do my posts not get engagement? We're going to talk about things you can do differently, design, messaging, and other th you know, content-wise that you could do to get more engagement in your posting. Because that's what you're always going for, is if it doesn't get engagement, you're kind of wasting your time. Uh, and then, as we've already talked about on the 29th, so put that on your calendar, is this month's masterclass, which we're going to do the deep dive on Facebook with everything Alex just talked about covered absolutely so we are we are covering a lot we have more free workshops coming up uh next month we're, we're still deciding between a couple different topics if you have a topic that you are interested in let us know in chat as well um as well as if you have questions about today uh, about what we covered today or questions in general for us um please let us know in chat we will stick around for a few minutes here uh to uh to to answer yeah, and I just put both so. links into the chat for you guys for both the uh, next week's workshop and the master classes now in the chat. I love it. All right. Any questions, thoughts, anything, guys? Questions, anything in chat here? Craig, did you know Saturday, January 2nd is National Buffet Day? <laughs> Trust me, there's way more random than that. I'll, I'll, Nash, I'll hold go on, hold on. For our next thing, National just to, just Fruit kinda... Cake Toss Day. Yeah. So if you are interested in tossing a fruit cake, that is on January third. Oh, thank you, Vicky. Vicky just said thank you both. I'll share this with my office. Thank you, Great. thank you so much, Vicky. All right, I'm going to put us in an interview here. If we have more questions, uh, please let us know. Um, Thank you so much, Vicky. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we're definitely excited for the uh, for all the content coming up. I mean, we got a crazy yep. year of content ahead of us. Um, Craig and I have committed to do this for a year, to do uh, three weeks out of a month, uh, to do workshops on Mondays, um, and then once a month to do a master class. So we're, uh, we're super excited for that. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything new coming in. Nope, no, no other questions. Uh, thank you to everybody for joining us today. We are going to get it uh, closed down here. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you do have questions, ideas for topics uh, or anything like that, let us know. Um, Frank Berry says that was great, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I wish I got to see you guys again. I, I miss our... Uh, our CRS camp crew. That's the, I got to hang out with both Vicky and Frank there. So oh, I, nice. I, I miss that for sure. Out on the, out on the seacoast. Um, awesome. All right. Well, 
We're going to close it down. Uh, thank you to everyone today. We greatly appreciate everybody's time uh, on behalf of Craig Grant um, with the Real Estate Technology Institute, as well as myself, Alex Camilio, with the Agent Inner Circle, uh, with agentinnercircle.com. We greatly appreciate everybody being here. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, give us a like on Facebook, subscribe to us over on YouTube, um, and uh, check us out on all the different social platforms. So, awesome. Yep. Thank you to everybody. Have a great day. All right, everybody. Have a good day. See you soon.